Thank you. That sound is okay. A uh, little bit of feedback. Okay. Uh, my name is Salvin Nielsen. I'm from uh, Oslo. Uh, I'm part here for many reasons. One of them is to give this talk about a little project I'm trying to start now. Uh, uh, I've called it Kaizendo. Uh, that quickly means the way of continuous improvement is from Japanese. Uh, you, you might have uh, figured that one out. Uh, it's about textbooks and free software. Uh, and with textbooks, uh, I, we mean school books, if you're not familiar with that word. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? Uh, let's start a little with the, uh, the situation in, in classes. Um, uh, well, textbooks are for classes, not pupils, which means if you have a special need of some kind, um, uh, the, the school book uh, will help you a little, but not all the way. Uh, but this could mean if you're colorblind, uh, or you have dyslexia, or you come from a literate home, which means you learn early how to read quickly, your problem will probably be that you're getting through your material quicker than the rest, and you're bored half of the time. Or you come from a home with lots of distractions, you don't find the quietness to, to read all that's necessary, uh, or you want something more interesting to read. It's, it's, uh, it's something different would be more in fun for you. Uh, chances are you'll, you won't get this, certainly not from the textbooks. And uh, yeah, you're a pupil, and you, should, uh, you have to accept it as uh, things are today. Uh, we should improve this, I, as I was thinking one day. I've been thinking about this for many years now, so this is kind of, let's try and actually do something about this. Uh, let's try to make individually customizable textbooks. This is what the project is about. But before we go into that, uh, let's take a little bit of a, a, a look at the, the, the basics here so we get, can get some context. Uh, if we look at software and textbooks, there are lots of similarities. I've listed a few here. There are, they are instructions. They're written using, with the text language. Uh, and it, it has a purpose of some sort. Uh, it, it, textbooks may, might be written in Norwegian or English, or, and software might be written in, in, in C or Java or whatever. Uh, the, well, about the people, is a, there are lots of similarities there too. You have an author in one uh, which writes things, and or a developer. Uh, you need people who care. This should have been lined up a little bit, but oh well. Uh, and uh, it is the kind of ideals you're striving towards in order to, to write this text. Like there's a, a match between the purpose, what you're trying to achieve, and the actual implementation. You don't want software which says it makes, uh, uh, it makes your robot create something uh, and doesn't do it. It's the same with textbooks. And it, in the act of writing things, you have uh, require the same type of requirements from the environment around you and your tools, and there's lots of, of things that are required. Uh, and when you actually get down to doing the writing, uh, lots of com communities there too, like, uh, you write something. Yeah, of course, this is obvious stuff. Uh, you, you compile it into something, then you distribute it so the user can find it. And when the user finds it, he reads it or runs it in order to achieve some kind of effect. Say, for example, learn or be amused or something like that. Yay. <laughs> so what? <laughs> Uh, so there are some similarities, okay? Uh, this is not perhaps very interesting, but let's try and make it a little bit more interesting. Let's see if we can add free software to this mixture. This is why I'm talking here about this and not at some learner's convention, because free software is the interesting bits here. Uh, let's uh, assume there are something called textbook freedoms, like uh, software freedoms. So let's take... Uh, Free Software Foundation's uh, four freedoms about reading, using, changing, copying, distributing. And a few more, like it's nice to have the publicity of writing free software because you can get easier jobs. Uh, and it's natural to share stuff. Uh, but 
if you put this to, to uh, the publishing sector, uh, they will start uh, saying, yeah, you guys are pirates. We don't like you to copy and distribute our books. Uh, so uh, there's luckily some issues uh, that, are, that are being solved with Creative Commons and such, so we can think this is at least being solved. But when you talk about all the free software things, like uh, uh, the community bits, uh, uh, the, uh, the feedback loops, like uh, uh, being able to talk with the developers or the authors, or that there's a, a responsive community around the book or a software project, we're, we're, this gets a little bit strange in the publishing world. Uh, 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 of course, sometimes this is things you want, but it's not a natural situation as, uh, as far as I know. Uh, the same with uh, the principles of free software. Release early, release often, or, or uh, there's a strong integration between the tools that create the good communication in free software community and uh, uh, the ways they communicate, like uh, RC channels that uh, have a bot in them that gives commit reports when somebody puts something in their code repository. This doesn't make sense in uh, when writing books. There's a, this is silly, and think about all the tools that we're using, about bug trackers and wikis and uh, uh, searchable web archives for mailing lists, uh, uh, commit mails from the uh, uh, repository. This is silly. Uh, IRC channeling channels with uh, karma and effort tracking. This is something very common in the pro community where I come from. Uh, this is, uh, it doesn't make sense in the publishing world. So. If we add free software to the, the thought process here, it doesn't make sense. It's not a meaningful comparison as, as it's on the basic level. Uh, okay, what can we do with that? Uh, what, how should we interpret this? Uh, dev development methods in free and open software. It's for lots of people, but writing textbooks, that's... Uh, very few people do this by tradition. You have the author and perhaps an editor and perhaps a f just a few more people who do a little bit of checking. Uh, so you can use it, it just doesn't make sense to do it as things are today. Unless we make individually customizable textbooks, then the, the, the world changes a little. We, we, our uh, ambition can make things possible, uh, make a difficult and pointless thing into something useful and interesting. And with customizable, I mean not just, uh, I mean variations of each chapter. I mean not just easy or difficult text. I'm, I mean variations in requirements, in what's needed by the pupil. Uh, say, for example, teaching styles or pedagogical methods that the teacher can use in order to, to convey the knowledge the best for that particular child. Uh, the abilities of that child. Uh, uh, some kids are, uh, come from an environment where it's easier to get smart than others. And, and it's okay that this is part of life and we should be able to, to, to make something out of this, in my opinion. Life situation. Sometimes a family goes through a difficult period. Let it be a little bit less to, to read, uh, but you still get the points and the important bits in the text. Uh, school requirements, you have so many t hours available during a year, or you have uh, uh, laws that you have to f follow. Uh, yes, an available time, as I said. Uh, okay, how about story variations? We're talking about books here, and the books have a, middle and a, uh, a beginning, a middle, and an end, and, and they tell a story, preferably, except when you're looking at, at uh, references. Uh, the stories like how was World War, II, World War II for the Belgians, the Dutch, the Swedes, the Chinese, told from the viewpoint of the Belgians, the Dutch, or the Chinese, or, or whoever. And uh, how about if the textbook helped you understand it then and there? Uh, what's easier to learn is another thing. Like uh, uh, integrals, uh, several ways of telling how integrals work and some ways might map better to the mind model of the child than others. And you, it would be nice to choose. To, to, and when you choose one, the rest of the textbooks follow that mind model, that way of telling how things work based on, on this. Uh, how about uh, executive summaries? <laughs> hey, 
uh, business people should log in. Daddy, can you help me with my homework? Uh, who has children here? Yeah, this would be nice to be able to say, oh, I'll just pick up the little bit of stuff that uh, I, I don't remember now, but I can refresh. This is a short version just for parents. I would like to see this. But there's a problem, and we're talking about lots of combinations of abilities of a text, and to choose what's necessary for that child. I've just tried to give you a picture here. This is a lot to write. It's way too much to write. It's, it's so much that uh, it's expensive. And this is one of the reasons these kinds of books do not exist. Even if it's nice, there's no publisher in the world who would want to make a book that uh, perhaps costs 20 uh, times as much to create in order just to sell a twentieth of the amount it's, it's cost to do it, uh, of the, what they would expect to sell it for. Uh, all right? But we know free software and how it works and, and the processes of creating code and the communication all around this. Uh, and this is what the project is about, and that's uh, why I'm here, um, to tell you and f figure out if any of you are interested in helping. This is the website. Um, there's more. How much time do I le have left? Ah, okay. I can go into a little more details. This is just not the pitch anymore. It's uh, some thoughts on how to implement it. Uh, this, uh, of course, is a kind of a blue skies. Uh, we would like to do something thing. Uh, there's no code involved right now. It's just more finding people who are interested in, in this topic and see if there's... Uh, uh, if we can make this happen, this is what I'm going to do. Let's look at some thoughts on implementation. Here's a wall of text. Um, we have all kinds of things that need to be done uh, for th to make this happen. Uh, represent the text in some way. Uh, uh, making an annotation system so that regular users can uh, give feedback on the text. That's what the open source thing is about. You don't write the whole book and everybody writes it like uh, the Wikibooks project, but you write, keep it uh, as one text with an editor, but you get feedback, almost like bug reports or even patches or uh, complaints on the IRC channel that this sucks. This is actually useful information. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff that is useful, and people who know tools uh, and, and would like to make them fit into this framework and help things actually stick together and become useful and distributable, and uh, we'd like to see that. Uh, one uh, very useful tool there is called Compt. It's a French project of, uh, uh, from a person called Philippe Agrin and his uh, gang of people in Paris. Uh, it's called, uh, it's behind a net site called comment.net, which is basically select the text and start a discussion about the text selection. Uh, and what is selected, an amount of discussion around that text gets a, a yellow background on the text, and orange and red and black, depending on how much text, uh, how much discussion is around that phrase. This is based on the uh, Free Software Foundation's discussion around GPL3. They had a tool called STET, which uh, tested this, and it worked really well. Uh, and they made something more... Po uh, uh, thought through and working. Uh, Git is obviously there, the branching and, and emerging is something which looks similar to, uh, to having different variations of a chapter, uh, so it's kind of natural, natural to put something in there uh, like this, uh, but uh, there's no rules right now. We're in the beginning of the project. If you'd like to uh, help, then bring your suggestions. Having said this, tools are not enough. We're, talk we're talking about writing books here, so we need people who write textbooks. But uh, there is a, so a good way of doing this is uh, actually thinking uh, we have a book, and there are several books out there that you can start with which have a free software type license, like Creative Commons, share like a version of that. Um, you will find those uh, on Wikibooks, on several other web pages. In, in Norway, which I'm very familiar with, there's uh, 
uh, a project called the National uh, Digital Learning Arena, NDLA, which basically has bought up a bunch of books, uh, uh, teaching material for uh, uh, kids up to 18 years old, I think, uh, all kinds of topics, and released them with the share-like uh, license and Creative Commons. Using that as a basis, you can start improving one chapter at a time after whatever is required. By the way, uh, the, the people and the icons on the uh, right you see over there, that, that's a way of just an uh, illustration on, on how a discussion between the users and, and the authors of a book might uh, happen. Um, another interesting little tidbit uh, is that even the Americans are thinking about free software uh, books. This is an actual thing going on uh, in the Congress, as uh, out there right now. Um, so there will be enough textbooks, that's the big thing. If you're interested, talk with me. I'll be hanging out outside, I'll be at the Pearl Stand. Thank you very much.